Chapter 41 By the time I got up to the loft, Todd had both hooves covering her mouth and looked like Celestia had just walked in and slapped her in the face. It was an amusing expression if one were to make fun of the situation. Oddly, that felt better than addressing reality. Oh no! How loud did I say that? She asked, looking over at her mother. Oh, I'm sure a few ponies near the edges of town missed it. Don't worry! Her mother chirped back with a smile. I shot her a disbelieving stare. Twilight groaned, however, and lowered herself to the floor. I limped past Twilight Velvet and sat down next to my filly friend instead. Relax, Twilight. It's not that big of a deal. I tried to assure her. Sure, the inevitable rabid mocking over the next few days would be annoying, but there were worse things. You again? <laughs> I told you I didn't need an escort. Who are you, anyway? Netlight asked, shifting his glare to me instead. Eh? I looked up at him to respond, but hesitated when his eyes widened. Wait. I recognize you, he exclaimed. Finally, his wife said behind me. It was that even worse turn I'd been waiting for. You are that changeling! You're trying to manipulate my daughter, he declared. Yeah, I figured he'd figure out I was... Uh, wait, what? Twilight blinked and then gasped out loud. Huh? Uh, oh, he had looked at the flyers too then. Her mother groaned behind me. You said you didn't believe those bogus stories, dear, she lectured. He didn't get a chance to reply. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad, Twilight yelled out. He gave her a split-second look of confusion before she blasted him backwards onto her bed. Well, sticking with that work before was a safe bet. Still, I would have at least given a bit of explanation first. Twilight! Her mother yelped, shifting to a shocked expression before I turned away and limped up to the bed. Aloysius took a moment to fly off my head and roost on the bed corner instead. I gave him a light nod before propping myself up and holding up my right hoof to Twilight's father. Are you alright, sir? I asked uneasily as he groaned and hooked my foreleg, letting me pull him up into a sitting position. Wincing for a moment, he finally opened his eyes and looked over at Twilight instead. Wait, what? What happened? He asked uneasily. It seemed to impair memory a little bit after they woke up. Toy Velva glared over at her daughter, but Toy shook her head sadly. They looked at one of those fake articles from earlier. They have a subtle enchantment on them, from what I guessed already. Hitting you with a magical low-density blast is the only way I currently know of how to knock you out of it, she explained. Her mother's expression shifted instantly, and she frowned. An enchantment? What is it supposed to do? She inquired magnify anger and doubt in the pony towards me. Setting them up for a perfect mindset to read the article would be my guess. I elaborated, winching slightly as I slid away from the bed. My legs still ached from the rock earlier, and had lessened my tolerance for standing. Taking the hint, I drew myself back and unceremoniously dropped to my stomach instead, sighing as the pressure was pulled off my leg. Does it still hurt, Mender? Todd asked softly, walking up to me instead and sitting down. I shivered lightly, nodding after a moment's consideration. Her father looked dazed still and gave us a confused look. Oh, it feels like I just woke up. Your moon mender. The article said that much. That part was true, right? If so, that means you're my daughter's cold friend. He deduced, it sounding like he it was more for clarifying his own mindset than anything. I couldn't tell who was from the enchantment or the blast that Twilight gave him, though. Yes, this is her cold friend. Yes, I talked to him already, and he's just as nice and polite as her letter said. Maybe too polite, really, Twilight Velvet explained, hopefully shifting away any potential wrath towards me, although I didn't know what to expect for saying I was too polite. My Twilight shot her skeptical glance before snickering, apparently, knowing something I didn't. He's not perfect and can be a little dense about us, but I like him just the way he is. She started smirking down at me before giving me a playful nuzzle. I rolled my eyes before sticking my tongue out at her, feeling a little bit more relaxed now. Her parents seemed more reasonable now, but I withheld judgment until her father snapped out of his daze. What happened earlier with the flyers? The stallion in question asked a moment later. He gave me a concerned stare, but looked far less malicious than earlier. <coughs> they are being dropped off all over town from the sky by a bunch of pegasi from the mail and weather teams. Private paid job by the sound of it. 
I'll be looking into that more later for sure. Regardless, the enchantment on them almost caused a riot, and they honestly thought Mendo was a changeling, to the point of trying to stone him. I've already sent a full report to Princess Celestia. Twilight's elaboration brought back rather painful memories, but I let her continue unabated. She hesitated and gave me a soft nudge again before continuing with, I shielded him to the best of my abilities, but one got to hit him in his injured leg. I've been, it's been bothering him ever since. I started to open my, my mouth to assure that I'd be fine when I gasped in shock instead. Wait, no, I didn't. It confused me for a moment as it echoed through my head alongside the open air at the same time. My gaze shifted past Twilight at the same time she turned around to face her window. Rim had just finished sliding it open and Fluttershy was hovering in the air just inside the room. Oh no, that's terrible! I knew I shouldn't have spent so long at Rarities. Sure, I was upset that it happened, but I... But if I'd known it was so bothering, I would have rushed home and gotten some of my pancreams and... She started rapidly rambling. Fluttershy! Relax! He's a tough stallion, you're freaking yourself out! Rainbow reminded, gently rubbing her hoof through the top of Fluttershy's mane. Bill Pegasus gave out a quiet squeak, but then nodded. Tide smiled and stood, however, turning to face the two newcomers. I politely averted my gaze from her flank as, and tail as she did so, coughing lightly to myself to calm the jitters. The combination of physical aching and whatever it was she hit me with earlier was causing weird thoughts. Pheromones? Tide seemed oblivious, of course. I'll go get some topical anesthesia from the bathroom if you wouldn't mind applying it, Fluttershy. She offered gently. Fluttershy nodded so rapidly that it started to destabilize her hovering. She landed a moment later, looking somewhat sheepish. Oh, that would be wonderful, Twilight. If it's not too much trouble, um, do you think you could also find a small bandage? I'd like to get some covering and antiseptic cream onto the injured side. She requested, landing and walking gently over to where I lay. <clears throat> Five of giggled lightly, suddenly reminding me that they were still here. I really had to work on that paying attention thing. You're always such a kind pony, Fluttershy. You certainly live up to your title, she complimented, earning a light blush from the yellow mare. Oh, I only want to see men are comfortable. I mean, why wouldn't some pony who want to do what they can for an ninja pony? Besides, I've been worried about Mender the entire time since I was over there. Oh, I hope Birdie isn't upset that I was so distracted. Fluttershy worried, fidgeting sight back and forth on her foreheads. Twilight giggled but rolled her eyes, offering, Why don't we just bring Rarity and Spike over here then? That way you don't have to worry about Rarity while here and Mender while there. Fluttershy looked even more flustered as Twilight pointed out her circular logic, but I just smiled at how cute she looked. I, um, I think I'd like to stay with Mender for now. It's been too long since I've seen him anyway. She finally excused, looking down at the phone and said. Ah, don't get all sappy on me, Flutters. I should also report that Twilight's shout was heard all the way up at the cloud there where I was about to practice my writing. Rainbow formed, eventually tossing a wink in at the lavender unicorn. Twilight groaned instantly, almost as if she had been expecting the jive and set up the reaction ahead of time. Ugh! Rainbow! I really didn't need to think about that. She protested. My turn to avert my eyes from those involved with the topic. First, it became much more interesting to look at suddenly. Well, not that she wasn't before, but that was beside the point. Thank you, Fluttershy. Sorry for worrying you. I apologized quietly as I started ranting at Rainbow. I zoned it out to the best of my abilities. Fluttershy looked up at me and smiled softly before shaking her head. I just care about you, Mender. A lot. She confessed, still a little pink from the earlier comments. She leaned down, however, and gently kissed me on the forehead, letting her soft mane drift over me. I smiled up at her until Twilight's mom let out a choking noise. Huh? Uh... What are you... Wait. Her dad muttered behind me, sounding surprised. Wait a second. Did Twilight tell them about Fluttershy? What the hell? You're cheating on her while she's in the same room? Her dad shouted out, immediately jumping to conclusions as fast as he jumped into a hostile stance on the bed. 
I winced painfully as I dumped in my inner scared backwards, giving me a shocked look. Tight went rigid instantly, then slowly turned around to look at her parents. Rainbow promptly broke out into laughter, however. <laughs> you totally didn't tell them about Fluttershy? Dash asked, words drifting out half-hashly between her laughs and rolling on her back. Well, at least some pony was amused. What? Nala asked, tone shifting low and pissed off sounding. There was a subtle difference between fury and simmering rage, I noticed. Twilight? Her mother asked a moment later, giving my filly friend a skeptical look. Twilight twitched lightly, then swallowed, starting to look flustered. Ah, well, I kind of forgot to mention, um... She started, every pony in the room focusing on her instantly. I could almost see a couple beads of sweat forming on her forehead as she gave the guilty smile I'd ever seen. Seconds passed before she finally said, Oh, I, I seem to have forgotten Mender's medical supplies. I'll be back. Twilight? Her dad barked out, but it was too late. The lavender man disappeared mom in a momentarily blinding flash of light. I'd almost forgotten she could teleport. Kind of wish I could do it, too, at this point. Her father sighed, however, and shook his head, looking back down at me instead from his higher position on the bed. Well, here we go. Time to take this like a stallion, if that was the proper term. You weren't cheating, were you? He asked softly instead, surprising me. I blinked once, but shook my head a moment later after I recovered. Huh. I'd expected more hitting. I kept my hopes up and my armor prepped. Oh, but that means my little twilight is actually involved in the herd. Tavo chirped in a moment later, saying, scarily okay with that aspect. Wait, were they going to beat me senseless or not? Dear, you're supposed to be concerned. No, I professed, looking flustered now instead. Why? That just means our family gets even bigger. And I'll get even more little fools to play with soon. She exclaimed, shifting from surprise to rather gleeful. Okay. I moved fully into scared and started working on terrified. I'd been scared of the wrong pony all along. <sighs> Fluffy's cheeks, which had been recovering, now heated up again. Maybe I should start carrying a cold pack for her too. Ah, well, you we kind of just had to hold off on kids at least for a year or so. Twilight will probably wait longer. I corrected, not wanting her to get the wrong idea and fluster Fluttershy. What? You're going to waste a perfectly good estrus period next week? Talvo asked instead. Uh, that was unexpected. A light slap sounded from behind me, and I turned to see Nye grinding his right forehead against his forehead. Okay, okay. Before this gets out of hoof, can you answer some questions? He asked, looking up at me instead. I rotated around and nodded to him, trying to adjust back into a comfortable position for my leg. As long as you don't mind me lying down. When I stand up, the blood rushes into my leg and it hurts. I requested, slightly adjusting the brace. Flush I smile, taking another step closer and lying down as well, pushing right into me with her side as she extended her wing over my shoulder. Just relax, Mender. You'll feel a lot better once I can wrap it. Flush I chirped, apparently forgetting about the full thing when she got the opportunity to take care of an injury instead. That's fine. How many are in the herd? Twice father asked after she settled in. It's just those three. I think Rarity is interested too, but... Uh... Rarity answered for us, apparently sobering somewhat. I sighed. That's a bad topic. Rarity asked me, but I didn't feel the same way towards her. She seems to be taking well, but I don't know. I feel bad. I elaborated, seeing Dash fall silent. Aw, that's not the best situation for any pony involved. I'll have to send her my sympathies. And give Spike some encouragement, Twilight Velvet added after a moment's thought, seemingly contemplating to herself. Wait, did she just like playing matchmaker that much? Oddly, I wondered what her occupation was. Now I sighed but nodded, seemingly assured by the honesty. Waiting for kids is also an admirable and responsible position. You swear to not have having bonded with Twilight yet? 
I'm a strong traditionalist, and it's considered improper for unicorns to engage in that before marriage. He explained significantly more rationally than prior. Okay, so this is going better now. To be honest, we have partially. Never at the same time, but she's used her energy to manipulate things inside of me for various purposes, and sometimes does it at night to calm me down. I admitted. Fluttershy gave me a reassuring muzzle, but I was surprised when Rainbow suddenly looked sad. Eh? Her father looked curious at that information, however, and before I could adjust Rainbow, asked, If you don't mind, could you elaborate? I'm afraid no pony knows much about you. I frowned. Unsure of exactly what I could and couldn't tell him suddenly. Thankfully, it was solved for me. We may answer thy questions, if that will suffice. Suddenly came from the stairs. I peeked over my shoulder at Luna as she wandered into the room from the lower floor. Every pony bowing, bowing except for Fluttershy and me, who were kind of as low as we could go already. <laughs> we instead dipped our heads to her. Luna? I agreed to her, giving a soft smile. I well, like gasped in offense, but Luna still snickered and nodded to me. Hello, Mender. I was looking for you, actually. However, I now see all that in that all individuals present would do well to see this too. She greeted back, smiling softly at me. I couldn't help but notice she dropped the formal speech instantly. To my surprise, as I turned to face Luna instead, there was a flash of light then that appeared practically on top of her. She momentarily looked surprised before smiling as the globe bounced around against her form, then shot to the right a meter so and flared up again. Tot reappeared there and looked to her left in surprise. Oh! <laughs> Princess Luna! What are you doing here? She asked, throwing a rather sizable medical kit to the floor. Fluttershy took the initiative and snatched it with her right wingtip, sliding it over to us with surprising dexterity. My sister is about to start a press meeting. And requested I let Mender watch. I decided to show every pony here, however. It'll answer a few questions along with shedding some light on what happened with the flyers, she revealed. Oh, that was important indeed. All of this crap was probably why Celestia couldn't attend the party today, which was beyond cruel, honestly. Why did I always have to cause such problems for every pony? Eh. With that said, however, Luna hover lowered her head slightly, and her horn lit up. I watched curiously, if not in a slight apprehensive manner. The last time I seen Luna using her magic, I'd almost turned inside out with a teleportation spell that dropped me in the middle of a hospital. The time before that, she was attempting to sever my head. This time, however, nothing malicious occurred. Instead, a sort of field appeared in front of the Princess of the Moon, and expanded to appear a meter wide and a half a meter by a meter tall. It shifted from transparent to black for a moment before a crystal clear image of a large stage and podium appeared. Hundreds of ponies were gathered in the audience, I noticed, as the camera swept over them to zoom in on the podium itself. Twilight perked up and trotted around the screen to get a better look, of course. Rainbow also looked curious as she took to the air and flew over to the display, landing slightly behind me and to the left. At this point, I didn't even have a second thought as she flopped close to my back. I was starting to realize that, by their culture alone, ponies seemed to be a lot more easy going about physical contact. It made sense, really. Fletcher took the moment to unpack the medical supplies and start to tend to my leg. I noticed her right ear shovel towards the screen, though. All of us quieted as the sound to cut in suddenly. The day was rather clear-looking in Canterlot, rather fitting for the princess at the sun to talk to every pony. A burst of wind drifted across the crowd as they gathered near the stage. What appeared to be cameras of some sort were lined up facing the podium, and dozens of ponies with notepads were scattered throughout the front of the crowd. Oddly, the cameras appeared to be an extension of on a still pictures and rather than motion capture. Princess Lesha herself walked forward half a minute later. Drawing hushed, wa drawing hushed wave of silence to expand across the crowd. Was the entire meeting about what happened this morning? She hauled in front of the podium and a gentle golden glow encompassed the microphones, gently just so they pointed slightly below the angle of her mouth. She didn't appear to be new to giving speeches, that's for sure. Stallions and mares, I welcome you to the castle. 
To be honest, this situation was not one I had anticipated ever needing to be addressed, but I've come to the conclusion that there has been some doubt amidst the populace. I'm here today to see if I can clear up some of these lingering concerns and hopefully allow things to be put to rest. Any and all questions may be asked by members of the media after I've finished. She spoke calmly. Knowing her personally, it wasn't hard to pick out a certain level of boredom in her eyes. That introduction almost felt like it was routine for her. Of course, if ponies ever were panicked as easily as they did at Ponyville, that wasn't really a surprise. Murmurs danced across the crowd, but she continued regardless. To begin today, I'm going to give you a bit of background information. Many of you already know of some of these, but it's worth repeating. A question is dealt with situations regarding other planes of existence before, she tossed out. She let the final sentence drop like a judge smashing a, gra a gavel, easily knocking the crowd into stunned silence. There was no easy smile on her face or sparkling eyes this time, however. Her stoic expression displayed nothing but a masterful and resolute seriousness. Celestia scanned the crowd for a moment before continuing with, this might come as a shock to many of you, but this is the case. Search our history books and studies into magic. You'll find research and case studies into it at multiple points in our history. In all my time of ruling this fine land, never once has this become an issue, however. Until now. More murmurs exploded, but she silenced them all with a simple shake of her head, flowing wind drifting in the fading sunlight. That's right. I gave the statement earlier, but there has been some confusion on the issue. My dear ponies in Ponyville were attacked by an entity that came from one of these neighboring dimensions. It was unprovoked and done with malicious intent. Gas and murmurs again danced across the front row. The ponies began fierce of running, seeming to put every deal of what she said in the papers as soon as possible. Celestia's level of influence was incredible to watch. She never looked outwardly angry or upset, but she held a level of absolute authority that impressed me. If she were killed there, an abuse of power would start up faster than the sun next to her set. To see ruler actually act with benevolence and kindness was downright startling. But this isn't the entirety of the truth. This much I openly acknowledge. Before this moment, there were things kept secret from the general public due to matters of security. The fact of the matter is that we have not been idle about our defense. Up until a month ago, I had a skilled research team in the field studying this very phenomenon. The goal of such a group was to find out the possible dangers of other dimensions presented to us, and find ways to counter these threats. They remained low-key and unobtrusive whenever possible under my direct orders. She started to explain. Now it was starting to get interesting. A whole strew of bioinformation on researchers came to mind, all located in that folder. Was that the team she was talking about? I mention this because the selling that has been so brutally slandered this morning by a supposed leak in our very media outlets is from this group of researchers. Yes, I'm sure every pony here has heard about Moonmender by this point. Rumors have spread like wildfire about him, but there's no more need for me to hide the truth. He was a private researcher before being enlisted by me specifically for this task almost three years ago now. He rapidly became the head of my dimensional research division, and his understanding of dimensional transit is second to none in a court to a country, I believe. Ah, uh, she continued. Oh, this is entire conference was set up to establish a cover story? That much seemed unlikely, but how much of what she was saying was the truth? Had she really had a group studying the dimensions? More whispers and furious writings ensued, but she carried on regardless. Great progress was made up until a month ago. A very tragic accident occurred, and Moonmender was badly injured in an experimental dimensional shift technique. When we finally recovered him, it was developed that he developed complete retrograde amnesia and didn't even remember his name. Unsure of what to do, I requested that my own student, a master of magical theory and concepts as you all know, to look after him and help him recover. I owe him the very best, after all, she went on. 
Oh, that was clever. Almost every aspect of that statement was completely true. Sasha finally smiled after that, actually chuckling to herself. <laughs> Admittedly, those other rumors are indeed true. My student has certainly done more than look after and I'm pleased to officially announce that they are now very special sun ponies towards each other. It pleases me greatly, and I have great hope in their continued happiness, she added. Oh, well... Well, at least that would put a stop to some of the rumors traveling around. Eh? Huh? Happier sending rumors spread through the crowd, and surprisingly more notes were taken. Oh, wait, why did they need notes on that? She lost her smile, however, a moment later. Then, unfortunately, we were attacked last week. Out of sheer luck, the entity went after the library in Ponyville that night. I have little information about its ultimate intention, but Moonmender happened to be there. I'll not lie to any pony. Combat broke out after Mender ascertained that the creature was a threat to Ponyville. Pinkie Pie and Applejack, two brave elements of harmony, assisted in stopping the creature, but the destruction was carried deep into the Everfree Forest. Moonmender held off the invader by himself until my sister and her night guards arrived and ultimately vanquished the creature. As many of you know, Mender was brutally injured in this event and lost his foreleg in the attack, she recounted. That was mostly true, with a bit of embellishment here and there. It was a bit surprising how honest she was being. Or rather, how honest she could be while lying. Circumstances be being extremely warranted, my sister took exception from Ender and gave him his leg back with her magic, as he so bravely lost it in defense of Equestria. He's still recovering in Ponyville, and as many of you know, there's a party in his honor going on right now. He's watching this conference as I speak. Being unsure of how to handle the situation, however, I decided to maintain secrecy of Mender until today. Now I reveal all of this to the ponies of a question hopes to stem the tide of distrust and malevolence towards this stallion who has helped us so. It shocks and concerns me to see that a group of individuals would go so far as his magically enhanced advertising to sign as such a kind and polite individual. I wish to see nothing more like it happen again, she finally declared, frowning out at the crowd. There must have been some unwritten clue in that final statement that told everybody that it was the end of, pre of the prepared speech, as the reporters in front exploded the questions all at once, caused such to get a soft smile on her face. One at a time, my little ponies, she minded a moment later, gesturing to one near the front in a row. Is this moon mender going to take a role in equestrian politics from now on? The Stalin asked instantly, pen at the ready. Celestia never lost her smile and simply shook her head. Moonmender has no interest in politics. I know him personally. His job at this point forward is a researcher. I no longer at least stand by waiting for another attack, she explained, her voice off but full of conviction. It would be interesting to find out how far she was willing to take that. She gestured to another reporter, who immediately asked, well, What are your plans to counter another attack if one were to happen? The reporter's voice was nervous-sounding and distinctly feminine. Were any of these reporters from the three magazines that wrote up all that slander? A small yet highly specialized and trained team of ponies led by Moonmender will be our defense against any further attacks. Both the day and night guard are contributing members, and our best researchers are equipping them in researching tactics. This will be our only group with such equipment, however, Slushy replied. She shifted a little bit more towards the relax towards relaxed with that statement, but maintained her absolute tone. Was she pleased with that question? It certainly leaned more towards the question's well-being in a practical sense. Another stallion was up next, asking, What information do we have on the leaks from Equestria Weekly? Ah, here was the interesting part. Celestia closed her eyes for a moment before shifting her gaze off screen to the right. Her left. I believe somebody else can better answer that question. If you would, Mr. Fancy Pants, she requested, moving to her right sally. Eh? Fancy Pants himself walked up in his typical attire, the, Im the immaculately pressed suit looking good on him, when added to the styled man an elegant gait. It would be my pleasure, Your Highness, he said, lining himself up with the pony before exhaling quietly. Despite his proper posture and groomed appearance, his eyes looked very tired indeed. 
This matter is being thoroughly looked into on all levels of the company. So far as we can tell, a small group of unidentified ponies used our press equipment to create official-looking FASA mail early in the morning. They delivered the flyers to various outlets, both here and in Ponyville, and tended them somewhere along the way, he explained, expression passive. Having a slight angle on the podium showed that his left hoof was shaking slightly, however. It didn't take long to find out why. So you're saying that the flyers are definitely not endorsed by Equestria Weekly? The same report asked a moment later. <coughs> Fancy Pants' face flushed slightly as his eyes narrowed a little. No! The proud company I own does not endorse these voracious and vindictive attempts at slandering a completely innocent stallion. To be honest, I find the very act absolutely disgusting, and I'm ashamed that they chose our company to promote it. Equestria Weekly promotes the absolute truth in reporting at every opportunity. Given that statement, this act is a travesty. There'll be a full front-page article in the very next release that announces these claims and promotes the absolute truth, he assured. His tone didn't sound animate as much as downright angry over the entire ordeal. He took a couple of deep breaths before calming down and visibly relaxing again. He looked back up at the utterly silent crowd and added, Furthermore, Mender and I met personally at that party that was so ill-reported on. I assure every pony here that he is a good son and has the question's best interest at heart. Those two eyes watched him, these two eyes watched him save the entire Cantalot orchestra that night during, despite risk of great bodily harm. He did so without asking for a reward or even hesitating. So ask yourselves, does that sound like a monster to you? Make up your own minds about it. Slusher was smiling openly at that point. Fancy Pants stepped back from the podium and walked away the, the way he came, ignoring the outburst of questions from the reporters. The screen became just so much light at that point. I sat there, partially in shock as I stared blankly at the darkening viewing window. He didn't even know me. Sure, his company was technically slandered too, now that I realized he owned it, but that didn't mean he had to say that last part. Why he stood up for me, a pony he barely even knew. There's a reason Rarity speaks so highly of Fancy Pants. He's a reasonable pony who does what's right. Flesh I whispered softly, smiling at me in my peripheral vision. I looked over towards her, only to discover that it was an almost knowing expression. It was like she knew exactly what was going through my mind, which further surprised me. For just a moment, I realized that I'd never really understood how close I'd let the yellow mare get to me. Flesh I leaned forward and ever so gently kissed my forehead. I relaxed against her and closed my eyes. A moment later, I felt Twilight lightly rest herself against my back and wrap her forelegs around my shoulders. The heat expanded to all sides of me, and I smiled as I felt two very distinctive heartbeats against my body. Luna made a happy, murmuring sound before giggling. <laughs> Celestia requested I stop the film after Fancy Pants finished speaking. She said you wouldn't likely be interested in the funny organizational questions that would undoubtedly follow, she explained stretching her legs out and letting the glow die down from her horn. Well, after I opened a glance over at her and I lightly nodded into Fluttershy's neck. I'm not so much interested in that as I was about the flyers. Fluttershy's right, though. I didn't expect Fancy Pants to stand up for me like that. I agreed, like glancing up at the Elmer. Her muzzle shifted to a slight smile as she rested her chin on my forehead. She looked so peaceful there. I felt her resting her chin on top of my head as well, almost mewing flesh off from the other side. I had absolutely no complaints about this situation. Although... So, what Miss Octavia said in her statement was right, then. He really did save the orchestra? Another twilight velvet asked behind me somewhere. Not that Ollie perked up at that, too, but I didn't pay much attention, however, as my mind whirled into motion. They mirrored each other and were very lax. I smiled impishly for a split second before lifting my left foreleg up. Luna raised an eyebrow barely a second in the corner of my eye. 
My left, my forelock extended up as I dipped my head down to pretend to itch my nose rather vehemently. Time practically had grown to a halt as everything fell into place quite literally, and I tried to devote the image forever to memory. It might result in my death, after all. <laughs> Both mirrors fell forward as my head dropped. Twilight's eyes zipped downwards in time to catch me scratching, but Fluttershy's eyes just widened drastically. <laughs> Neither reacted in time before their muscles touched. Twilight froze in place almost instantly, while Fluttershy's eyes started to shiver slightly. There was a hesitation for just a moment. <laughs> I could have sworn I saw Fluttershy's eyes start to, slight to lower slightly as she continued forwards. Then the instant was over as both mares exploded away from flesh as wings shooting at the full extent fast enough to almost knock Nightline into the wall next to the bed. <laughs> ah, oh no! Oh no! Um, I, I, uh, I'm really sorry that I... Uh, oh dear! Flesh rapidly started to spew the chain of oh dear rapidly devolving into a long, drawn-out squeak. Flesh sat there looking more dazed than anything and a blush standing across both her cheeks. For the most part, I didn't have to act shocked in the slightest, given that Flusher actually put her knee in my gut the, on the way back. Giving it a weak wheeze, I couldn't even properly enjoy the fruits of my plan as I flopped sideways, clutching at my stomach with both forehooves. Okay, I admit it, I probably deserved that one. Rainbow, who had been watching the last of the image fading away, rapidly turned and looked over at us with a questioning expression, apparently having missed the whole thing. Wait, what happened? She, a she asked. Throating a place to look at the three of us. Whoa. Fluttershy, calm down. Are you okay, Mender? Twilight asked, finally recovering and restarting her brain as she looked down at me with concern. I winced and gasped momentarily before nodding, sweet air slowly coming back in my lungs. Ah, yeah. She just knocked the out of me accidentally. I sure decided to just rest there for a moment. First I squeaked louder when she heard that, however, and lowered herself flat to the floor. Oh no! I'm so sorry, both of you! No, no! Mm, what a disaster! She murmured, breathing rapidly and shivering. Okay, now I just felt like a jerk! Twat edged over to her and gently placed her hoof against Fluttershy's shoulders before gently speaking. Fluttershy, calm down. Mender's fine, and I'm not mad at you or anything. But I kissed you! The yellow pegasus stuttered out, looking horrified at herself. Of course, I knew the real reason as to why she was so shocked. Twilight didn't, however. My fellow friends here lowered alone. She looked away. Is it really that disgusting of a concept? She asked gently. A Twilight! Flesh I inhaled so fast I thought she was trying to suck up Twilight. Um, hmm. I think I remembered seeing a video game or something like that based, based off that younger recruit used to play, but I can't remember now. See that like the comparison would be would better suit Pinky anyway. No, it's not that wide. Um, oh dear. Fluttershy shirt closing her eyes tightly. No. Was she really going to tell her? Every answer board I could manage to push down the empathy link was injected into Fluttershy, who smiled softly when she felt it. Thank you, Bender. You're right, I have to do this. Twilight, I, um, really like you. She managed to squeak out wincing after she expecting the world to promptly end. Twilight tilted her head and I inwardly groaned. Oh, no. She didn't think that... I really like it too, Fletcher. You already knew that, though. Twilight assured a moment later to, to a warm smile before nodding twice. Flush eye deflated visibly and I sighed. Heh. <laughs> Twilight Velvet slapped her forehead instead, interestingly enough. Twilight, stop and think about it for a moment. She suggested in a frustrating tone. Ha! Okay, so her mother knew her a little bit. Gently I sat up and earned a helping hoof from Fluttershy to stabilize myself again. Rome gave me a confused glance and pouted, still having no clue what had happened, it would seem. Flush eye froze suddenly. Eyes slowly expanding as she looked back over Fluttershy. The yellow mare blushed lightly and shrank away from the shocked gaze, but having her hoofs still on my foreleg. I wrapped my limp up with hers and gave her an assuring smile. It was an indescribable to feel her relax somewhat from the gesture. You like me, um, 
more than friends? Twyla finally asked quietly, eyes listening in until the little she exhaled. Was this okay to get into with our parents right there? Flush I timidly nodded and squeezed her on my leg a little harder. I gave her another soft tug and she smiled lightly. Whereas I shot to the size of saucers how instead, however, and she started looking back and forth between my two Philly friends. Ugh. That sounded weird even in my head. Huh. Well, actually that makes me feel a bit better over the whole situation. A herd is supposed to have mutual attraction after all. Now that pointed out idly, snapping his daughter out of her seeming shock enough to finally blush. Yeah, it was definitely time to invest in ice bags. Most of us got into the most awkward situations. The sad thing was, I only predicted it to get worse. Um, please don't hate me, please. I can't, I can't keep it to myself. Flush, I begged, squeezing my foot tighter than ever. I was suddenly happy it was my right one. She was cut off before she could even finish the sense of the request. No, Fledgeshy, I'm never going to hate you. You just caught me surprise by surprise. I had no idea you liked me I like that. Um, when did you start thinking of me like that? Twilight asked, sounding shocked. Seriously? Even I noticed the object behavior before she flat out told me. There had to be a record in there somewhere. Did the question even keep records? I should get myself qualified for a few of them if they did. Both as record holder in terms of fastest diagnostic of insanity and as a measure to see who could fool me the shortest amount of time. First I thought about it a moment before nodding. Oh, that's easy. I didn't expect expect her to actually recollect it, however. The castle was dark and cold at this time of night. Honestly, I didn't know what I was doing here in the first place. It was a really bad idea for us to have run off into the forest, and kind of felt that we wanted into this old castle, too, even if it were for a really good cause. Why did the night have to be so dark? It was just scary this way. Let's move up light things up while we were still outside. <coughs> the stairs kept going up in a tight spiral. And I was thankful to have the girls so close to me. Abadak was so strong for leading the way through the dark, and a part of me wished I could be that sure of myself. All I could do on the way here was run away in panic. Sure, I helped them with the manticore, but was that really all that useful to my friends? I tried not to whimper as we reached the top of the stairs. My mind froze as I tried not to scream as I saw the dark clouds and pure anger of the powerful alicorn. But something was wrong. It only took me a second to notice the broken shards and nightmare moon's hooves. Oh no, no! It couldn't be the elements of harmony! I stared north as the rest of the girls started forwards. If they were destroyed, we couldn't win! It was hopeless. <coughs> No, the man we ran up here to help was facing off against such power all by herself. Even if she was talented, how could she possibly win? Why did she keep trying? We should just run away. Twilight sparkled. I looked over at her just as she turned around to look at us. In that instance, her eyes swallowed me up. There was something in them that I couldn't even begin to fathom. Surprise, sure, but a deeper warmth. A happiness that we were here that I didn't understand. She smiled. Yeah, I didn't have to understand. Even if it didn't make any sense, I suddenly felt her energy tugging my heart forwards. She was so brave to stand up and move all by herself. Her eyes widened and she gasped suddenly before her expression turned to that of a smirk. Slowly, she turned around to face Nightmare Moon again. What was she doing? Suddenly, I didn't find myself as scared anymore. She was sure she we'd be okay, and I believed her, didn't I? You think you can destroy the elements of harmony just like that? Well, you're wrong, because the spirits of the elements of harmony are right here! Twilight assured, earning a surprise start from the powerful alicorn in front of us. 
That was the first time I saw it. Nightmare Moon looks scared. What? She asked incredulously. Toy then went on to point out how all of us had succeeded in representing the very elements of harmony we'd been searching for. They had been with us all along. Twilight gave me my destiny that day. Her words and feelings were responsible for me becoming the element of all kindness, and in that moment she truly understood me. In doing so, I helped give her the hope she needed to defeat Nightmare Moon with all our powers. She trusted in us at that darkest moment, and it was that she has the kind of confidence that I wished I had. Fluttershy finally finished her tale with a please nod towards me. I smiled back, of course. It took me a day or two or so to realize that I respected the man who gave me that to me more than the confidence I yearned for. Another day or so made me realize I didn't disrespect her, but that's how amazing and gorgeous she was. Um, then I started to love her, and the longer time went on, the more adventures we had. She continued, she continued, her voice to dwindle down below my cues to hear afterwards, however. It seemed to have connected how pink her cheeks got, I noticed. Did that mean if I applied a cold pack, her voice would get louder? Something to try later. Tot wasn't taking it nearly as well, it looked like. She sat there with her mouth open and a blank stare aimed directly at Fluttershy, who was starting to get flustered now. Um, is that bad? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you or bother you and make you feel uncomfortable. Fluttershy immediately apologized, uh, of course. I gave her a skiffle look, but the lavender unicorn finally snapped out of it. <coughs> But that was... Uh, you've liked me since we first met? I, uh... Twilight managed to stutter out. Well, never mind. I thought she'd snapped out of it. I guess I was wrong. Everything she said made sense to me. I mean, all of you are really amazing, and that was the first time you all shined together. I reasoned, earning a soft smile from Fluttershy. Rainbow was grinning at this point, however. <laughs> That's awesome! You'd better not apologize, Fluttershy. I'm proud of you for saying all that, she declared. <laughs> the burst of energy surprised Elmer, and she gave a squeak before shrinking down a little. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rainbow. Should I have not apologized then? She asked. Rainbow gave her a deadpan stare before slapping her forehead lightly. <laughs> I snickered lightly and pulled Fluttershy closer, giving her a soft squeeze. She hesitated for a moment, but then relaxed against my chest and I slightly rubbed her back. Rainbow was right. She was awesome for having said all of that. Of course, that just left Twy to decide what to do with the information. Every pony in the room turned, directed their, redirected their attention back to Twy, who froze as she suddenly found herself in the spotlight again. Er, yes? She asked, looking hesitantly over at me instead. Luna cut me off, however. My equestrian culture may be a little rusty, but I believe this is the part where you either acknowledge and return the feelings or deny them. She spoke up politely, but rather bluntly at the same time. I felt flesh I shiver, but I gave her another squeeze and she bared her left cheek into my collarbone for support, partially hiding her from twilight. I understood, of course. Sometimes having cover was an encouragement instinct when you were expecting incoming fire from something. Given my low of armor, I actually didn't mind being used as a barricade as much as I thought I would. Twy blinked, then giggled to herself. <laughs> you remember what I said earlier, don't you? I'm all for love no matter the gender. Fletch has already a hurt member once we finalize it, so why wouldn't I give her a chance with me too? It only makes sense, she reasoned, being remarkably twilight about it. I started to laugh before being partially lurched backwards by rapidly pouncing Fluttershy. She was in no time in landing on Twilight a moment later and almost sending them both into the wall. She then proceeded to give the largest hug I'd ever seen. Admittedly, seeing that mix with my sudden loss of attention left me just a tad jealous. 
Still there both with me too, so I guess it evened out. Fletcher had a lot of catching up to do anyway. <laughs> Tuttle did laugh after she recovered her balance and hugged Fluttershy closer to herself. Smiles the yellow wings slipped around her in both directions. They were rather cute to watch. My serenity was shattered, however, as I heard my name shouted at the top of Pinky's lungs from downstairs. Eh? Are you in here, Nunder? She yelled again, sounding a bit closer this time. Why was she so she wah? Why was she specifically looking for me? Oh yeah, Flush and I were, and I were supposed to tell you when we got it. The Pinky was looking for you. Dash suddenly remembered, drawing her attention away from the new couple and looking over at me instead. Eh? Where's flattened back from Owen and she shot me a sheepish smile while rubbing the side of her head absently. I sighed and turned away, propping up to peek over the balcony. Pinky perked up the second she saw me and hopped up over to the stairs in her usual energetic manner. I had no complaints, however. It was much nicer seeing her like this than in pain like she had been. There you are! I was looking all over you! I thought Dash would get to you first. She admitted, sliding to a stop and shifting to a guarded position as I wobbled and tried to make my way down the stairs. It was nice of my friends to be on the lookout for my inevitable stumbles and gravity-induced blunders. They're here. They just got distracted. Fluttershy finally confessed to Twilight, I explained, signing down to her level after slipping the last few steps. She had the courtesy to catch me and slow my fall, at least, before gasping and hopping unnaturally slowly into the air. I shivered as I watched her float for a second before landing and dancing around in a tight circle. I missed it! Oh, no! I have to go to the national zoo again! Do you think they'd mind? She asked, hopping impatiently in front of me. Snickering, I shook my head and reminded, reminding her, they probably wouldn't mind telling you about it. <clears throat> Although you never said why you were looking for me. She stopped for a moment before before I stood up again. Oh yeah! Bonnet left the Princess Luna and got her to air your fun movie thing with Princess Celestia onto the soundstage out there. She thought it would be a good idea to clear her name and then wanted to introduce you after the movie. She rapidly explained. What? But uh, that would mean getting up on stage in front of all those ponies. I'd be in line with hundreds of ponies staring at me. Hundreds! Hundreds! I started racing, just thinking about it, and I rapidly froze. No, that wouldn't work at all. I'd have to snap the vinyl about doing something else. Why was she even trying to do this for me? Why did they think this would work in the first place? Why um, Why was I floating? Why was I floating? Looking back behind me, I saw Rainbow lightly look, hooking her frogs under mine and lifting me into the air. Don't worry, Pinky. I'll get him over to vinyl. You go up and tag the Flutter Shine Twilight. Rainbow assured confidently. Ah, no, this is a bad idea, Rainbow. I don't like crowds and... I intended to protest, flailing my back legs about trying to shake myself loose. She was absurdly strong, however. Oh, yeah. I couldn't wait anywhere near what those poles back at the barn did. Well, if I, well, I could if I wanted to, but that would also put me into Twilight's basement rather rapidly. It would be awkward to explain to everyone how I suddenly temporarily gained three metric tons. Okie dokie dokie! Meet you there in a bit! Pinky declared, totally ignoring me just like Rainbow was. We're going to give a curt nod to Pinky and a reassuring smile to me before launching both of us straight through the open door to the library, not even giving me enough time to properly whimper. Oh, this was a really bad idea.